Hello and welcome to iGameOver channel. In today's episode we're going to take a look at how is it possible to quieten down your computer. So is your computer too loud? Stay tuned and watch on to find out how you can do to quieten down your beast. Okay, so what we're going to do is take that Fantex Evolve MATX case and we're going to try to make it silent. I mean, the case is really nice, but uh, well, let's say like that, the fans are not the quietest. Okay, so to measure effectiveness, what we're going to do is we're going to see how long loud this computer is before we change anything. And we're going to do it just with a normal usual app, so don't take it as a absolute result okay this is not soundproof room with professional you know measuring equipment or anything like that so but it will be a good indicative of how effective our modifications will be so um let's do it let's turn on the computer and see what's what okay so let's see first what is our basic um, measurement here for a quiet room So after calibration, we're sitting in about eight decibels or so. Okay, let's try to reset this and turn on the computer. So we are sitting, uh, sitting in about 30 decibels right now. So um, yeah about 22 decibels or so uh, when the computer is on. Okay, well, let's get to work and let's modify this computer so that uh, we can make it a little bit quieter, shall we? So what we'll need for this project is a can of compressed air, any amount of fans that you wish, but do check with your case what sort of fans uh, the case takes and how many fans the case takes and some sort of fan hub, or even better, if you can, a fan controller. So we're going to start by opening the fans, right? All of them. And so just be careful when you open so you don't catch something. It really doesn't matter what sort of fans you take, just try to look at the decibels and take the quietest. So um, 12 you know, centimeter fans, 14 centimeters fan, you know, whichever you like, whatever suits your budget some screws and most importantly that you have one of those which is like a converter so it can take that voltage down to from a fan especially if you don't have a fan controller just a hub like we have it in this project and then just connect it and we're going to do it with all of the fans we can mount those fans in two ways either using normal screws or with, uh, like you can see, those rubber pins that will, you know, perhaps prevent a little vibration. Before we do anything, just a safety and caution, make sure that you turn off your power supply and you pull out that plug so that you're sure that there is no more electricity in the system. After you pulled out that plug, it is a good idea to press that power button a few times just to make sure that there is no more residual electricity in your system. Next, remove all of the panels from your computer. Yes, all of the panels. That means the top, the side, both sides, both, you know, one and the other, both left and right, and the front too. Now it's time to use that aerosol spray can and take away all of the dust from the filters. Once you're done, just remove the filter and put it somewhere safe, or you could even wash it. Then remove that side panel. I actually attached a hard drive there, and if you have a different case, you might just simply not have that panel. Begin removing the fans, starting from the front. Just unscrew them in that order. Thank you. 
remove the fan header either from the motherboard or from some hub that you have in the back and then just thread out the, the cable and take that fan away entirely. Next, remove the fan from the back and thread out its cable and then remove the top fan if you have it and make sure that you watch out if you have a water cooling like I do so it doesn't drop. So now it's the time to start mounting our fans, but before we do, let's take a closer look at the actual fan itself. Find those icons that you see right now, because they are really important. What they will show you is a direction on which fan is spinning, but more importantly, which way the air will go. So you see this one shows the arrow backwards. That means that the air is going to be pushed exactly that way. It is important because the airflow in the case has certain weight. Air behaves in, you know, in the same way. It has the same characteristics all the time. And so we can use that to our advantage. And with that in mind, let's start by mounting our back fan first. Just uh, remember that the first screw is always a little bit tight. It's always a little difficult. So it might be a rather lengthy and frustrating process, but once you get that first screw, you're going to be fine. Start by mounting the rear fan. Um, remember, rear fan is an exhaust, and this is where that icon that I showed you before comes in, okay? So make sure that that icon faces backwards, like outwards of your case. Next, thread that fan cable to the back of the case. And this is going to be a process that we're going to repeat for each and every fan we're, going, we're mounting here. Now, originally I thought to put that uh, liquid cooling in the front of the case, but, um, well, we came up on a little, little snag here. Do you see that little tiny extruded thing in the metal there? Well, that was just enough extruded to not allow me to put the screws through at the length that I had. So I had to resort to just putting the putting the liquid cooling exactly as it was right on the top. Next, put the top fan if you still have a place for it and then thread that cable to the back as you've done with all of the fans so far. Note that top fans are always an exhaust fans. And then mount your front fans. I eventually managed to do it in this case but it turned out to be a royal pain in the <laughs> to work with. Next part is to actually connect those cables or connect those fans to something. So if you went ahead and bought yourself uh, some sort of hub or a controller, this is a part for you. If you connect to your motherboard, connect to your motherboard and that's it. And after that, you're pretty much done. Just make sure that you tuck up all the cables, tie them up, you know, whichever way you need to do it and then proceed to assembling your case together. So put back the panels, you know, screw all the things that you had to unscrew, and then you will be done. And now comes the moment of truth. What are the results? And we're sitting at 25 decibels, which is a nice five decibels lower. So we went from, you know, so-so, not very quiet, to relatively quiet. It's okay, it's a good result for the, for the investment. This is a result when we're listening to it right by the computer. But let's see what happens if we just put it as if we would be sitting right there on the desk. So as we can see from our point of view, as we're sitting right now, we're sitting in about 16, 17 decibels, which is a very, very respectable result indeed. So we're at the end of this and was it worth it? few words of um, advice before. Do not buy this Fentex case unless you want to keep it in stock as is, okay? This case has been an absolute nightmare to work with to add cooling. Different cats outs and bends and everything like that. Don't get me wrong, this is a very high quality case. I would recommend it to anyone that wants to just keep it as a stock cooling, which is sort of mediocre and a little loud, but okay. 
Um, it's very roomy and nice to build with, but um, if you want more, if you want to upgrade your cooling, you're going to run into a serious issues. Like you see, I have a different t-shirt that, uh, you know, that I, from what I had in the beginning of this video. Well, it's because it's two days later. And um, yeah, let's just put it, let me put it that. Fantex, if you're watching, please revise this. Keep the quality as it is. Maybe put some more fans or, you know, better fans or some sort of fan hub with a controller. Anything like that, okay? But just just revise the design. It's horrible for upgrades. Anyway, have we succeeded? Yes, we did. We achieved about five, six decibels down, you know, which is good. Um, it's not brilliant. You would need to put some sound dampening material to, to it in order to achieve, you know, greater quietness. But then if you want the silent case, um, you probably want to look elsewhere like Fractal Design or the newest uh, Cooler Master Design. Anyway, it was a success. The PC is quieter. Is it massively quieter? No. So it's entirely up to you whether you want to do it or not. Anyway, thanks for watching this video and uh, stay up to date with the newest videos that will be coming out by subscribing to this channel. Don't forget to like that and share this video and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.